We paid five developers to make us 50 Minecraft updates. Each developer was in charge of making a grand total of 10 unique additions to Minecraft. From brand new mobs, some that attack, and some that protect, to special rare drops to aid you in your survival world. Even some odd ways of getting around. The best part? They were told they could make whatever they wanted. So with that, enjoy these 50 paid Minecraft updates. So let's look at Code Zealot's 10 updates, beginning with oven blocks, a new cooking apparatus. We're gonna bake some chicken in here, place it right in the center, and notice the fire begins cooking. Wait a little bit, and you'll eventually hear the oven ding. Look at that, baked chicken. You'll even see some particles go off when the oven is finished. However, leave it in the oven for too long and you will run into some burnt food problems. Number two, better bread. First, take this new recipe of a cobblestone and a stick to make a pestle. Take your wheat, drop it into a cauldron, and then use the pestle on it to mix it together until you're met with some wheat flour. Look at this. Combining that flour with a bowl and some water will give you a ball of dough. Ovens are useful because you don't need fuel for them, you just need to be nearby when they finish cooking. On top of that, it comes with some new recipes as well. So once we grab our baked bread, we can then also use it to make ourselves some lovely chicken pot pie. Yikes. Don't leave me alone with this. Number three, animals now poop. Yes, these hideous little monsters will now dookie all over the place. Rather embarrassing, really. Make yourself a pitchfork with some sticks and cobblestones in order to clean up after your animal's mess by simply right-clicking to scoop the duke. Yes, and now you've got it in your hand. Ick. But hey, you can use the poop as fertilizer for your world. Number four, better smoke. You can now cause rooms to fill up with smoke by blocking above them. And as you can see here, that is exactly what's happening here. But be careful because if you stay in a smoke-filled room for too long, you'll begin to suffocate. Of course, breaking that block will allow all of the smoke to dissipate and then your room is as good as new. Nowhere near as smoky though. Bats now drop, uh, drops. Check this out, bat. Die! It now drops bat meat. And as you might expect, you can cook that bat meat using your brand new oven. Uh-oh, it's getting dark out. That's for good purpose, because number six is a new crop we're gonna need in a second. Garlic. This is a brand new type of thing that you can harvest in your world. Just go over to it and right-click it in order to get yourself a bunch of garlic. And if I were you, I'd keep it on you. But don't forget to plant some new garlic after the fact, which you can do by planting some garlic seeds in the ground. Just like that. And you'll know your garlic is nice and finished growing when it gives off these lovely green particles. Well, number seven are vampires, a new mob that you're gonna wanna keep your hands on that garlic for. Mm hmm That's because bats now spawn above ground at night and can turn into vampires with relative ease. Now watch as these guys slowly become nasty fanged creatures that will come at you if you don't have any garlic handy. They'll literally begin transforming before our very eyes. Guys, could you, could you start transforming, please? Before our very eyes? <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Much better. And they will start to come at you. I, oh my goodness. And we've been infected by a vampire, which is bad news. However, if you hold the garlic, they will stay at bay. Though it's too late, we've already been infected. So what happens when you're infected? Well, if you let them kill you, I'll show you exactly what happens. On spawning back in, you will become a vampire. Given enough time, you will turn into a vampire on your own, and you'll be given a whole bunch of effects. Night vision, speed, strength, as well as slow falling, as well as the fact that other vampires will leave you alone. Nine is splinters. Anyone that's ever played Minecraft's probably punched a tree. Well, don't do it anymore. You literally get a splinter in your hand, and it will constantly poison you until you make a new item. Tweezers using two iron nuggets and one stick. If you have those tweezers, you can right click and it will get rid of the splinter from your inventory which will no longer be poisoning you. Get to use an axis, it's the only way. And finally, a new boss mob, the Spider Queen. Spiders will have a chance to turn into this giant spider mob at night which you'll need to take on before it summons in a nest that will spawn in even more spiders that you'll have to deal with. A whole mess of them as well. Now you'll need to attack the thorax of this spider in order for you to take this creature out. Anything else will not work because it's only weak by its body. Not bad, Code Zealot. Now we check out developer Godlander's 10 updates, starting with a portable nether portal. Look at this thing. 
awesome. It's something you've always wanted and involves the new snapshot items from Minecraft 1.16. In order to make this thing, you'll need a fire charge, you'll need obsidian on the sides, and you'll need your nether scrap in the corners to make this portable nether portal. But it's amazing. Simply right click and you will instantly be placed into the nether. Beautiful. Well, I mean, kind of. It's We're in the middle of a soul sand area. It's, it's, it's actually kind of hideous. Right clicking again will take you to the overworld, but we're not headed there just yet. We've got more to cover. This guy right here, aka number two, Wraiths spawning in in the Soul Sand Valley. This is a brand new type of mob that you're going to have to look out for because the moment it gets close to you, it's going to start dealing mad amounts of damage. It doesn't actually deal that much damage, but it does deal damage. And what's even scarier is you don't have any reasonable way to take it out. You just have to kind of run from it, which is, you know, scary. <laughs> Come on, Wraith. Can we just talk? Please? That would be... I. Oh my gosh, there's a bunch of them. Yeah, they spawn in all over the Soul Sand Valley. You can literally see them appearing as we're moving around. They are everywhere. Oh gosh, and they're all starting to come for me. Uh, yeah, maybe it is in fact time we use this portable nether port. Let's get out of here. Oh boy, where am I? Oh, there's the showcase area. Just as well. Number three is the Infernal Silverfish, which has a chance of spawning in every single time you use your portable nether portal. So I'm just going to keep right clicking. Oh gosh, there it is. That is, in fact, the Infernal Silverfish. It is an invisible fire creature that, well, chases you and lights everything ablaze. The crazy part is it will light water ablaze as well and will actually attempt to follow you around no matter where you are. That's right. Even in the water, fi fire is appearing. It's the scariest thing. Oh, my gosh. He looks like he's stuck. So, you know, maybe this is for the best. I like this, though. This, I, gosh, okay, I don't like it that much. Can you calm down a little bit, buddy? Yes, well, we can go ahead and attack you in the meanwhile. Hopefully it starts drowning or something. That would be ideal. <laughs> I'm actually not even sure if you can kill this thing. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> you can kill this thing. The fourth up that we paid for is the ability to control weather using a netherite loaded beacon. Yeah, get a load of these weather controls. Y'all ready? Day, night, noon, midnight, time flow. Heck, you can even set it to rain or switch things over to the next day. It does take netherite ingots as fuel, but allow me to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about. Look at the current time. Sun is in the sky, shining, looking good. Let's switch things over to nighttime. And just like that, it is now nighttime. The ability to control weather and stuff. Try a couple different options. Let's switch things back to daytime. Beautiful, yeah. There's the sun. Of course, if you want to switch things over to noon, works very similar. Noon, sun is directly above us now. Of course, we'll go over to midnight. Yes, baby, yeah. And lastly, of the actual time flow changes, we can just switch things over to time flow, which will allow everything to move as anticipated. See, now the sun's back to moving. And hey, if you wanted it to rain, well, just swap things over to rain. And just like that, it is raining. Oh, baby. That is sweet. Let's go ahead and clear up the rain, though. It's time to show you the next update. It's number five here. Fire spread between entities. Some of y'all know when you're attacked by zombies that they, from time to time, can actually light you on fire. Well, we've made changes so that the very same happens with other mobs, too. We're just going to light one single cow on fire here and you'll see in just a second okay well we'll light two that the fire is going to begin to spread to all of the other mobs as well oh these poor little betsies i mean i'm not particularly upset yo we about to eat good i mean i'm already down five steak don't mind if i go ahead and restock oh man even the entities are temporarily on fire oh no actually the items are actually deleting i'm gonna go ahead and grab those <laughs> oh man hungry Notice it didn't light any of the actual wood on fire. That's just as well. I didn't really want it to do that. So 
Six on Godlander, aka 16 total, is cinematic third person shaders. You may notice a second ago when we went to third person mode that everything got just a little bit brighter. Well, that's because we've built shaders in when you're in third person mode. Minecraft has always supported screen space GLSL shaders ever since the update that introduced the super secret settings. We can still access some of them by spectating certain mobs. This effect uses one of these shaders to add in bloom. It overrides the glowing shader. A side effect of using this shader is that water becomes invisible when it's active. So, as you can see here, the water completely disappears from this river. <laughs> oh boy, yo, even the salmon, it looks like they're floating in nothing right now. And if we were to jump in here, you'd see that we are in fact swimming around, but it looks like we're, in a way, swimming around in nothing. Now, it even works in this third person mode as well. And, truth be told, it looks a little bit better and more obvious during the night. So, we're gonna switch things over to nighttime, and you'll be able to see that even in the middle of the night, things get quite bright and very cool. You can see the glow that that beacon light is giving off from behind us in a very unique way. I wish they added this to game. I think the uh, ray tracing NVIDIA shaders are coming soon, but either way, I'm a fan. Uh, back to daytime. Paid update number seven, snow will accumulate on the ground. Here we are on top of a giant mountain. And what we're gonna see in a very short moment is it begin to snow. Now, normally snow layers would not continue to stack on top of each other. But if we wait patiently here, what you're gonna see is exactly that occurring. The snow will literally begin, see there's one of them right there. The snow will begin stacking all over the place and actually getting taller and taller regardless of its normal behavior in game. That means this snow will just keep growing and growing and growing. This would be a really cool and realistic update to come into the game. I wish it was here now, but for now I'll just have to settle for <laughs> paying for it. Godlander's eighth update is the ability to give stingers back to bees. What we're gonna need is a golden nugget as well as a little bit of honey. Combining these two together in a crafting table is going to net you a makeshift stinger. Now normally when you attack a bee, they can sting you, and once they do sting you, they'll actually lose their stinger. You can see the stinger on the back of this bee's behind right now. Now it's gone. Go ahead and throw this stinger back on the bee, and not only get a stinger back, but he'll be friendly once again. So if you actually have pet bees in your game and you punch one by mistake, you now have an easy way to make sure that they don't die. Because normally when you get rid of a bee's stinger, it quickly dies thereafter. Oh look, he's hungry. Mine. You're coming with me, buddy. Update number nine. Lightning will turn sand into glass. Let's go ahead and head over to the desert so we can show this off right here. We're going to spawn in some lightning. And you can see right off the bat, that this stuff instantly turns into a type of glass. If you try and mine it, you won't get anything from it. It's a semi-transparent glass, and we'll need a silk touch in order to use it. See, even using a regular pickaxe won't allow you to collect it. But if it has silk touch, you'll be able to get your hands on a new type of block. Rough glass. The recipe for which is simple enough, one rough glass next to another will get you to regular glass. So now, if you happen to be in a thunderstorm, or happen to have some crazy spawn eggs that allow you to summon in lightning, which is awesome by the way, you'll be able to collect a new type of block in a far more realistic way. Because if you didn't know, superheating sand, well, I mean you should know, you do it in furnaces, get you glass. Godlander's final update takes us to the end. Where are we exactly? Well, we are in luck, because the Totem of Undying has now received the ability to save you from the void. If you didn't know, Totem of Undying will actually give you a second shot at life when holding it in your hand and being dealt fatal damage. Now, if you fall off the void, it will instantly take you back to one of the end islands. You'll have very low health, but hey, it's better than losing all your items. Developer Dash Jabs brings us these next 10. Number one, AKA 31, Magic Protection, a new enchantment. It's an enchantment that will protect you from harmful magic-like effects. These boots have been enchanted with such. So we're gonna grab our hands on a cave spider spawn egg, a wither skeleton spawn egg, and a witch spawn egg. Will swearing armor with this enchantment on, you will not be able to take damage from poison, as you can see from these cave spiders being incapable of doing so. The wither effect, which you'd normally get from this creature, although he still packs a wallop, get the heck away from me, and naturally with witches nearby, most of their poisons, slownesses, and weaknesses won't work. From time to time, their damage potions will still come in and get you, but 
for the most part, you are essentially immune from these witches dealing any sort of major damage to you. Although clearly, they can still poison them themselves. Our next paid update, conveyor belts, a new type of block. To make this new type of block, you're gonna need to get four cobblestone, place them on the sides, four iron ingots, place them in the corners, and one single piston to push things along on your conveyor block. And as you can see here, they are capable of transferring a multitude of different entities, whether it's items, other mobs, or heck, even players. Look at this. Load this up in your world and you're gonna have the ability to automate a whole mess of new things. It's a great alternative compared to honey blocks which can also carry items. And of course they're directional, so depending on the direction you are facing when you place them, that is the direction they'll start moving things along. Don't mind me. Just gonna deliver the rest of these guys right on down the pathway. Meanwhile, we can move on to the potion of anti-projectile, which is a new effect that you can get from drinking certain potions. You can find these in witches' huts, which there happens to be one of right here. With any luck, this hut will have what we need. There it is, baby. <laughs> Just kidding, I, I knew it was gonna be there. Drinking a potion of anti-projectile will actually cause a major particle effect to occur behind you at all times. An anti-projectile particle, which you can see right there. Check this out. Every single time this pillager attempts to shoot at us with his crossbow, it's not gonna do anything. However, this will only protect your back. If you would be facing the pillager, you would notice right off the bat that you could start getting hit once again. So, have your back covered at all times. Man, I missed the chance to say watch your back. Or rather, this potion's got your back. Ugh, whatever, leave me alone. Maybe this golden potato can do us one favor and keep us nice and safe. It's number four. Well, 24. Just surround a potato with a bunch of gold nuggets and then you've got a golden potato. And when you eat that potato, guess what happens? Well, you'll get a whole new type of effect. Resistance. A minute of resistance. On top of it, also healing you quite a decent amount. Resistance is an overall protector preventing major damage from being done to you, comparably speaking, to normal damage output. Finally, I understand what the Irish people were always talking about. 25 here is the ultimate sponge. To make this, you're gonna need one block of gold as well as eight sponge, placed as such to get your ultimate sponge, which is essentially an all-you-can-use sponge. Simply right-click with some water nearby and you can instantly clear out whole bodies of water, although you'll need to be a little bit diligent and kind of clear out them in a slow manner as best as you can because if you're not diligent about it, well, the water will not clear effectively. So kind of get in there with the nitty gritty. And as you can see in just a second here, you'll have noted that, hey, a lot of this water is completely gone. No light is <laughs> pretty overpowered. 26 is Ooze, a new mob. But if you want to find out more about this mob, as well as the other 24 updates we have yet to cover in today's 50, you're going to have to subscribe.